you can do it. You can do it. Oh my God, it's doing it. Oh, I love technology. Awesome. All right, what we're doing here is we're looking at four, two, three, and we're going to do numbers one through four. And that's looking at this data here. And what it's looking at is the density. That's how many deers there are, like in an area. Okay, so what they do is they count the deers in different areas of the forest um, and created this table. We're going to use this table for all of these numbers. Okay, so first off, what this is saying is, in a certain acreage, so a certain like area of the forest, so in a five acres, and an acre is about a football field, so five football fields, they found 10 deer. And then they went, and where there were eight football fields, they found zero deer. 10 football fields worth of land, they found zero deer, and so on. So this is what we're talking about. How many deers there actually, excuse me, actually are, versus, since we're going to get into the line of best fit, versus what the line of best fit said there should be, okay? Because the line of best fit isn't, isn't based on, or it is based on actual data, but the line of best fit is like the ideal situation, okay? So we're going to be assessing those two options. So the first step, step one, create a scatter plot showing the deer population in each acreage, okay? So I need to first look, and what I always do is, this is X and Y, acreage and number of deer, and I want to look to see what is the lowest and the highest values, 5 to 58. So when I'm making my graph, I want to make sure I use about half the page. And when I'm making my graph here, this is going to be acres, right? I hate how the word acres is spelled. <laughs> acres, and this is deer. Okay. Acres. It's, it's an old uh, English. Uh, oh, one sec. Somebody just came into class it's a little bit late, but we're happier here, but come earlier next time. All right, remembering the Monday schedule. Thank you for joining class. All right, so the acreage, the main hard part here right now, our task is just to get our units right. Because if I say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then deers, went, for me to graph 180 is gonna be impossible. So with acreage, we go between 5 and 58, so I think if I just go 5, 10, 15, 20, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. That'll get through all my values, okay? So then I'm going to look here. I have to go from deer population from 0 all the way up to 180. So I think for this one, I'm going to do it by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40. 50, and so on, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and that should give me all the way to the numbers I need. You see? And you're like, well, how do we know? How do we know if we pick fives or tens or we pick, you know, 20s or you have to make those choices? This is zero. You have to make those choices. And that is why these are hard. Okay? Do your best. Now we're just making a scatter plot. So now that I have my, my graph set up, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to put them in there. 5, 10. 5 for X, 10 for Y. 8, 0. 10, 0. Those are easy ones to plot. 14 and 42. 14, 42. Do your best. Doesn't have to be 1,000%. Uh, 20 and 100. 20 and 100. 22 and 66, 22 and 66, um, 30 and 90, 30, 90, All right? Because this is just 60, 70, 80, 90. You don't have to write every, every single tick mark in there, but do it if it helps you. And then 45 and 180, this is the one that's crazy. There's 45 acres of land. There's 180 deer on that, in that little space. That's crazy. All right, so 50 and 100, 50 and 100, and 58 and 116, 58. Here's 110, here's 120, so 58, 116 is about here. Okay. So we've done number one. Number one, create a scatter plot showing the deer population in each acreage. So what this is saying, it does look like the smaller acreages have fewer deers, 
but then it's kind of inconsistent. You see how right here at 50, you can have 100. And then over here at, uh, what is this, like 40, 42, 45, there was like, um, there was uh, 180. It should be right there. Actually. All right, if you make a little mistake, just fix it. All right, so we did step number one. We created a scatter plot just to get the data on there. Now, remember what we're comparing. We're comparing the scatter plot and the line of best fit. Because the line of best fit tells us how many deer there should be, but we're in reality. So we have to compare how many there actually are. This is how many deer there actually are in each acreage, in each number of acres. So where there's a group, an area that has 60 acres, there's uh, 116 deer in that, in that 60 acres. So that's how we're doing this. The next step is we gotta graph our line of best fit. And this is for number two. They gave us this line of best fit. So we have the y-intercept, we have the slope, 2 over 1 slope, okay? So we have we have n, we have b. Can you guys see that? Why can't you see that? What's going on with this? All right, there we go. Now, how do we graph a line? I really hope that this is okay. If you're not sure how to graph lines yet, you got to come in for that tutoring. So email me. You got to do that. But the way we do it is we graph the y-intercept first. Here's the y-axis. So the y-intercept is at 22 on the y-axis. Oh. Now look, our, this is important. Everybody focus back here. The slope is 2 over 1. But if I'm trying to zoom, you know, if I'm trying to graph 2 over 1 and each mark, each line goes up 10, I'm going to be doing this. I mean, it's going to go like this, 2 and then 1. Two and then one, two and then one, two and then one, two and one. Those stairs are too small. They're too small. It's not helpful to think of the stairs as two over one. So instead, this is what we're going to do. Remember, this is the rise over the run. And it's a ratio of how much the rise and over the run correspond. Two over one is the same as 10 over five. Oh. So remember, when we're doing the slope, the slope is just a ratio, ratio of the rise over the run. And as long as the rise over the run, the ratio stays the same. I could do 2 over 1. I could do 10 over 5. I could do 100 over 50. I could do 1,000 over 500 because that is the same exact slope. So I'm adjusting the slope. I'm going to use this one in order to figure out how far over and up I need to go. Rise of 10 from 22 to 33 or 32. 22 to 32. And then a run of five, we're going to go over one. We're going to go up and we're going to go over. So actually, I'm going to keep on doing that. Up 10, over five. Up 10, over five. Because these are 5, 10, 15, 20. These are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So keep your units organized. And then finding this line ain't so big a deal. You don't need even four of these things. You could have done it on two. So I'm going to go ahead and make my line like that. And it's not perfect. It's not perfect. We're not trying to build a bridge. We're just practicing for when we build a bridge. And when you build the bridge, you'll use computers. And they'll be perfect. All right. This is step two. Okay. Um, step two. Question two is just we need to uh, plot the line. You know, the, the estimate, the estimate of how many deers there are is based on this line, right? So if we wanted to find how many deers there were at 70, maybe 100, we would go up and find where the line crosses 100, and we can make an estimate. That's what the line of best fit allows us to do. So for, um, for step two, all we had to do was graph the line of best fit. We did that in red. Now step three. Does it appear that this line is a good fit? Let's just do that over here. Good fit. And we'll do it like this. We're going to go weak. We're going to go um, moderate. Or we're going to go strong. So, you know, it could be a combination of the two. If you're like, well, it's, it's not strong, but it's not exactly weak. So I'd say it's kind of a moderate fit. You know, this, there's some that are close, but some are like off pretty far, right? This one's off really far. This one's uh, off pretty far. That one's close. So I would say for this, 
Yeah, I would say it's actually weak, moderate. You can combine them, right? Weak, moderate, moderately strong. You know, these aren't these aren't things that you know um, don't overlap. You can have a moderately weak, you know, Wi-Fi signal, right? It's not either it's weak or strong. Actually, thinking that things are one or the other, black or white thinking, is like the bane of our existence. If we didn't think black and white thinking, life would be so much easier. That's okay. We're all learning that. All right, check it. We're done with three. Let's see what four says. Four is where all of it comes together because everything we've done so far is kind of stuff we've done so far. We've already we've already set up and done scatter plots. We've already graphed lines. So this is the only like real extra part. Okay, so really focus on this. Um, let's go ahead and make our residual plot right below it, aligning our y-axis. Let's make our line this way too. And I'm going to go ahead and keep the, I always keep the same scale for um, my x-axis, just so I can even, I can look above and see how it fits, right? Because I know that, for instance, at 10, right? At, at 10, it was at zero, okay? So it's this far below my line of best fit. So at 10, it's gonna end up with a point down here, somewhere. We don't know yet, we don't know where. All right, now with this, um, to find the scale for this, remember that the residual plot is saying how far off the point is from the line. This one's the furthest off, and this is off by about 80. So I think I can do this and go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50, negative 60. So the main thing here is you have to fit. Scaling the graph is your choice, and you want to make sure that you can fit the information necessary on the graph. Okay, no problem, Marco. So when I'm looking at how big my residual needs to be, I need to find, well, what's my biggest error? Because I have to be able to express that error on my graph. If I would have done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or even 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, this wouldn't fit. This point showing that it's this far off would be like way up here. It wouldn't be able to show it. So if you're like, I never know how to do the units, don't worry. Make your best estimate. You'll see if you made the scaling wrong because you won't be able to graph it. The goal is just to be able to graph it. So you haven't done it wrong. You just made a, a wrong guess to start. All right, next, let's make our let's make our table. Let's make a table with four columns, and this one is acres. This is deer. This is our equation, equation. <laughs> um, there's 22, and this is our residual. So again, this part, you know, we already know, we already know some things here. We already know that there's five acres and we're supposed to, you know, 10. We're just putting this, this chart over here um, to help us with this process. 10, zero, uh, 14, 42. 20 and 100, 22, 66, 30, 90, 45, 180, uh, 50, 100, and ugh, can I make a five? 58 and 116. All right, that's our table. That's what we know so far. Now here's the thing, this is like another key, key part. So everybody focus right here, focus right here, focus right here. Okay, the actual is how many deers there actually are. Actual. Remember the line of best fit, the line of best fit right here is our projected. Projected isn't how many you usually get. You might be projecting that you're going to get, you know, 95% uh, on the next test based on how hard you work, but that might not be true. The actual and the projected might be different. And when we subtract them, we find the difference between the actual and the projected, we get our residual. The residual is just how far off the actuals are from our line of best fit, from our projected values. That's what the line of best fit is. Remember at 100 acres, I could 
use the line of best fit to make my estimate that there's supposed to be this many deer. Okay, so the line of best fit may not be perfect. It's never really, you know, actually perfect because phenomena in the real world isn't isn't perfect. You know, it's not always what you expect. But we can use the line of best fit for projection. Okay, now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the number of acres and input in my line of best fit to see how many deers I should have. Two times five plus twenty-two. Two times, this isn't big enough column. Let's get rid of that line right there. Ooh, look at that, perfect. Let's make the residual column smaller. Okay. So two times five plus 22, the line of best fit says that there should be 32 deer on five acres of land. So the actual was different. There are only 10. The line of best fit says that there should be on eight acres of land, 16 plus 22, there should be 38 deers. There wasn't, there wasn't any deers in that acre of land. The line of best fit says that there on 10 acres of land, there should be 42 deers. There were zero. Okay, so we're, we're seeing how this actually isn't that great of a line of best fit. All right. On 14 acres of land, the line of best fit says that there should be 28, 10, 10, 10, 10, 50 deer. There are 42. Okay. I'm just plugging in how many acres we have to see how many deers we should have. 20 acres should have 62 deer. There was too many deer in that one. There were 100, but the line of best fit said that there would only be 62. All right, two times 22 on 22 acres of land, there should be 66 deers. Ooh, there were 66 deers. That's amazing. All right, on 30 acres of land, there should be 60, there should be 82. That's pretty close, there were 90. All right, and let's see, on 45 acres of land, that's 90 plus one, uh, 22 is 112. On 50 acres of land, there should be um, 122. And on 58, well, 58 acres of land, that's 116 plus 22 is 138. Okay. So here's what we have. Here's what we have. We have the actual number of deer. We have the projected number of deer. The residuals are just subtracting the two to see how far off the line of best fit is from our data points. We just have to subtract. Keep it organized so we can all get through this. All right, I got a, I got a um, four minutes left. All right, look, subtract the actual minus the projected 10 minus 32, negative 22. Zero minus 38, negative 38. I'll give you a screenshot option in a second here. Zero minus 42, negative 42. 42 minus 50, negative 8. 100 minus 62 is 38. 66 minus 66 is zero. That was the only one that's on the line. 90 minus 82 is 8. 180 minus 112 is 68. 100 minus 20, 122 is negative 22. Uh, 116 minus 138 is negative 22 as well. Ah, well, well, well. Look, these are our residuals. Now, at each number of acres that we have here, we need to plot it and see how this relates to our graph above. At five acres, what was the difference between the data point and the line of best fit? I'm going to take my guess, say it's about 20 or so, negative 20 or so. Let's see. Oh, negative 22. Nice. So at acre, five acres, we see that the, the point was below the line, this amount. We know that that distance is actually negative 22. So I'm going to put this right here. Right? You see how that's about the same distance. The residual always shows what's on our graph already. All right, at eight, negative 38, eight, negative 38. 
let's see if that makes sense. At eight, maybe it's about negative 38. Yeah, that makes sense. 10, negative 42, 10, negative 42. 14 and negative eight, 14, negative eight. 20 and 38, 20 and 38. 22 and zero, 22 and zero. 30 and eight, 30 and eight. 45 and 68, 45 and 68. 50 and negative 22, 50, negative 22, 58, also negative 22. All right, so there's our residuals. And let's see and compare it to our graph above. Let's see. At, at let's see, at 30, 30 acres, see how it's just a little bit above the graph? The residual shows that same amount. You see here at, at 45, at 45, the point was way above the line of best fit. Let's see, at 45, the line was way, the point was way above the line of best fit. That's what the residual plot is showing. And we just need to find the exact value, so we use the table. But we could have, you see how this is down below the line of best fit? Same down here. See how this is down below the line of best fit? Same down here. Okay, that's all it's showing. How this right here is right on the line, right on the line. That looks like uh, at about 20, it's that far above. Yeah, it's that far above. Here, a little bit below. Yeah, a little bit below. These two. Are these two? This one's a little higher. And we have that. So the residual plot is just showing the difference between the actual and the projected amount. The projected is always on the equation. The actual is just from the data. Woo! That wasn't bad. Guys, give me in the chat on a scale from one to five. How are you feeling about it? On a scale from one to five, how was that breakdown? Scale from one to five, please. Everybody. On a scale from one to five. Thanks for watching at home.